Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make this ladybug game with all the little babies being a matching game and a counting game. So the yarn that I used for this project was Bernat Super Value. This is True Red. And this is just black. And I also used Bernat for just the whites of the eyes. So you just need some scrap white for that. Um, and the quantities are going to be listed on the screen. And you don't need a button for his behind end, her behind end here. Um, I just kind of cross-stitched. The numbers on it but you will need scrap yarn multiple different colors for the matching game part and I mean it's just gonna be scrap yarn so it's not really a quantity and then of course more red and black and then whatever you choose to do whether you have little tiny buttons you can use but I just sewed all the numbers on I'm using a five millimeter hook and we're going to start with the head. So get your black. We're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. If you don't like the magic ring, then you can do a chain two and put everything into the first stitch. So you can slip stitch chain one your first stitch for every round is going to be in this chain one space so your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch so that's two single crochets in this chain one space and then proceed. You should have a total of 12 stitches when you're done. So when you're back around, you can slip stitch to the top of this first stitch. And chain one. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. So the first stitch goes in that chain one space and then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat for a total of 18 stitches. So slip stitch to the top of this first chain, chain one. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. Your first stitch will go in that chain one space, stitch number two, and then you'll do your increase of two single crochets in the same space. This round will give you a total of 24 stitches. Slip stitch and chain one. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. Your first stitch will be in that chain one space. That's three single crochets and then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. This round will bring you up to 30 stitches.
slip stitch, chain one. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 36 stitches. Your first stitch goes in the chain one space. That's four single crochets, and then your next stitch will get the increase. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. Stitch number one goes that chain one space. That's five single crochets and then your increase. So this is what you should have, it's about how big it should be, the palm of my hand anyway, my hands are small and fat. So for the next four rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these. So this is my four rows. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. So this is what you should have. We're going to start decreasing now. We're going to do a five single crochet decrease. Your first stitch is in that chain one space. That's five single crochets. And then your decrease can be a regular decrease, which is in the full stitch, pull up a loop. In the second full stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is an invisible decrease. So in the front loop of the first stitch, pop around to the front loop of the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, and finish your stitch. It leaves the back loops there to fill in the gaps. Looks better. Either way, five single crochet decrease will bring you down to 36 stitches. And the slip stitch to the top of this first chain and chain one. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and decrease. First stitch is in that chain one space. So bring it down to 30 stitches. That's four single crochets and then my decrease. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. Your first stitch starts in the chain one space. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. This brings you down 24 stitches.
That's my 24 stitch. I'm going to slip stitch and chain one. And my next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So I'm going to stick some stuffing in this because we're going to start, we're just going to continue to decrease the next round and then the round after is just one single crochet. So I just want to put some stuffing in this. Um, don't put a whole lot because we're trying to make this as light as possible if kids are going to be carrying it around. So just, just lightly stuff it. We don't want it heavy and then the head's constantly hanging down and so your next round is going to be two single crochets. Oh, I'm st stuck on something. Two single crochets and a decrease. The first stitch is in that chain one space. It's two single crochets and then my decrease. This will bring you down to 18 stitches. And slip stitch to the top of that first chain and chain one your next round is just gonna be one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches don't continue to fill it because then we're gonna slip or we're gonna yeah we're gonna a single crochet the two ends together like that so just whatever stuffing you've got in there now is probably fine so one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches That's my 18th stitch. Slip stitch. Chain one. Now turn it to the side and squeeze these two ends together. And now you're going to get into these stitches and do a single crochet. Making sure you're grabbing right across like that. So that's my eighth stitch. Number nine, since we had 18 stitches, is going to be a slip stitch and fasten off. You want to fasten off with a sewing tail. Lost my scissors. Because this is going to get sewn to the black part of the body. So that is your little head. It looks funny now, but it won't look so funny when we uh, when we put it all together. We can finish this head later with the little things and the eyes. It's further down the PDF anyway, so we're just going to move on now to the black bottom. Since we're already working with black, and we're already struggling to see it, we might as well keep going. So every single round is going to be started in the chain one space, just like we did with the head. And um, this is going to be built in a half double crochet. And you're going to slip stitch and chain one every single row. It does not count as a stitch. So we're going to start with a magic ring of eight half doubles. Or do a chain two and put eight half doubles in the first stitch. 
actually chain two, not one. That's my eight half doubles. I'm going to slip stitch to the top of my chain two. And I'm going to chain one. Chain one every single row. The only reason I chained two in that circle was to get the height. I don't need any height here because I'm putting a half double in the same space anyway. So we're going to start our first round is going to be two half doubles in each stitch, giving us 16 stitches. So into that chain one space is going to be your first two, <laughs> your first stitch, which is two half doubles in the same space and continue. That's my 16 stitches, and I'm going to slip stitch to the top of this chain, and chain one. Your next round is going to be one half doubles and an increase, bringing you up to 24 stitches. So your first stitch is going to be in that chain one space. And then we go into our increase, which is two half doubles in the same space and repeat. So chain or slip stitch and chain one. Your next round is going to be two half doubles and an increase. This will bring it up to 32 stitches. Your first stitch is in that chain one space. That's two half doubles. And then the next stitch will get the increase of two half doubles in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be three half doubles and an increase, bringing you up to 40 stitches. Your next round is going to be four half doubles and an increase. And this will bring it up to 48 stitches. Your first stitch is in the chain one space. That's four half doubles and then your increase. Slip stitch and chain one. Your next round is going to be five half doubles and an increase.
The next round is going to be six half doubles and an increase. This brings you up to 64 stitches. Your next round is going to be seven single or seven singles, seven half doubles and an increase. This will bring it up to 72 stitches. So your next round is going to be eight half doubles and an increase. We're almost done. This will bring it up to 80 stitches. Slip stitch chain one. Your last round is going to be nine half doubles and an increase bringing you up to 88 stitches. Well it's not your last row, it's your last increase row and then we got to put the legs on. Flip stitch and chain one. So that's as big as we're making it. So my edges, I'm going to turn this light down a little bit. So my edges are um, rolling up just a little, but for the most part, it's flat. So we're going to start making the legs. So starting in your chain one space, you're going to do 10 half doubles. That's my 10 half doubles. My yarn does not want to feed properly. You're going to chain 10. And then do nine, nine single crochets back down. That's my ninth stitch. Then you're going to do, sorry, slip stitch into this next stitch. So that's your leg. Then you're going to do six half doubles. That's my six half doubles. You're going to chain 10. And do 9 single crochets back down. Slip stitch into the next stitch. 
and then do six half doubles. Chain 10. And do nine single crochets back down. Slip stitch. And now I want you to do, so you have th your three legs here, and that's as many legs as we're making. So now I want you to do 21 half doubles. That's my 21 half doubles. So we're going to start building the legs again. So we're going to do the same thing. There, so our three legs on either side are done. So you can slip stitch and fasten off. So, let me zoom out a little bit. This is our, this is going to be the part that, well, not all of it, but you can decide how big you want your butt to be. And then up here is going to be where the head gets sewn on. like that. So you're going to have all this space back here to make as big as you want for putting all the little babies inside. That'll be completely up to you and that's what you're going to choose to do when you sew the red shell on is you're going to just going to not sew some of this <laughs> and leave it open. So 
that's what we're looking at right about now. I'll zoom out a little bit more so you can see my feet. So we can sew this head on now. Um, you've got 20 half doubles in here. So you just have to split the difference. You've got nine stitches. Two, four, six, two, four, six. Yeah, if you count in six each side, you should be able to get it even. I'm just going to do um, a mattress stitch. So, let's get our red, and we're going to start making the upper shell. We're using the same hook, unlike what I did with the turtle. With the turtle, I used a different hook, but we're just going to stick to the same hook. They're not really that humpy. Well, they are, but they're wings, so we're going to make a magic ring of eight half doubles. So chain two for your magic ring. So you're going to slip stitch and chain one. Your first round is going to be two half doubles in each stitch. The first stitch is the chain one space, so put your two half doubles in there. You have a total of 16 stitches when you come back around. So that's my 16 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that chain one and chain one. Again, same thing as the black. Every round is going to start in your chain one space. Uh, I'm not going to probably go through it because we just made one. This is almost exactly the same, um, but bigger, just so we can have a little bit of an arch. Your next round is going to be one half double and an increase. Your next round is going to be two half doubles and an increase. This will bring you up to 32 stitches. Your next round is going to be three half doubles and an increase, and this will bring you up to 40 stitches. Your next round is going to be four half doubles and an increase. 
This will bring it up to 48 stitches. Next round is going to be five half doubles in an increase. This will bring you up to 56 stitches. So this is what you should have. It's cupping a little bit. It's hard to see. Something like that. Your next row is going to be six half doubles and an increase. This will bring you up to 64 stitches. So your next round is going to be seven half doubles and an increase. This brings you up to 72 stitches. So your next round is going to be eight half doubles and an increase, and this will bring it up to 80 stitches. Your next round is nine half doubles and increase, and this will bring it up to 88 stitches. So 88 is what we did with our black and you're probably wondering why this looks so small. So our black, even though these are both brunette, they're both super value, they're both exactly the same yarn, our black is thicker than our red, and that's why it's a little bit bigger, and that's why I went so big with the red, is because this is a lot thinner than the black. So your next round is going to be 10 half doubles and an increase, bringing you up to 96 stitches. I've really been struggling with this red throughout this entire video. It's just breaking and splitting and I have never, this must be a bad batch, I've never had this much problem with Bernat red. Anyway, chain one. Your next round is going to be 11 half doubles and an increase and this will bring it up to 104 stitches.
So now I'm about the same size as the bottom part. So we got 104 stitches, so I want your last round to just be one half double in each of these 104 stitches. So this should help it kind of curve in a little bit. So slip stitch, but I don't want you to fasten off. So if you have a stitch marker, I want you to protect this loopy loop because we're going to use it to slip stitch the two ends together. But first I want to be able to sew all the black dots on. So as you can see, it's cups up pretty good that last row so uh yeah so before we slip stitch the two ends together we can make all of our dots sew them on the line can be done there's multiple ways to do it i just sewed mine on after i sewed it on because the dots you kind of just place off to the side so you're still going to know where your middle is whichever way you want to do your middle you're still going to know where the middle is so um yeah i would say let's get these spots done and uh then we can do the middle after we slip stitch the two ends together so i've turned my light up again for you you can make as many dots as you want this was my last one i did six dots and i just kind of put them randomly all over but you can do as many dots as you want so we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets they're all made the same the dots on the wings they're all made the same so chain two and put everything into the first stitch if you don't like the magic ring that's my six single crochets so we're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. So first I'm going to slip stitch, maybe. I didn't even pull this tight. So slip stitch. Two single crochets in each stitch around. Starting in the chain one space. Chain one, by the way all up on my screen you can slip stitch to the top day one your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. I'm just going to pull my middle tight and I'm just going to weave it in. So in the chain one space, that's one single crochet. And then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. slip stitch chain one and your last round is going to be two single crochets and an increase this brings you up to 24 stitches and then that's about it so easy peasy you can make all your spots the same size if you want to
So you can slip stitch and fasten off with a sewing tail when you're done. So we can sew them to the ladybug. Don't worry about that. That can just stay kind of... Well, I mean, I weaved this in so I can cut mine off, but... It's not super important. It's going to be on the ladybug, so... I'm going to put the pattern up, and you can go ahead and make as many dots as you want, and then we'll get them all sewn on, and then we'll put the ladybug together, and then we got to make all the babies after this, so... I'll see you on the other side. So I've got all my dots done. I'm just sewing them on. I did six. And then we'll, um, after our dots are on, we will, s we will single crochet or slip stitch or single crochet the two ends together. And then, um, we could do our center line and then make all the BBs. So that's that's the plan. Well, I got my some of my spots on. I think I'm going to do my line first, and I may actually fold this in half and do a half a dot somewhere because I don't want it to just be you know, like a normal, like this. But, I mean, if I have to, I have to. I wanted it to kind of be different, but it didn't turn out that way. So, anyway, let's get these two ends done. So I want you to get a couple of stitch markers. So you can mark off where you want your... Um, butt left open. So my center line is going to be here. So somewhere in this butt area, I want to mark, I'm just going to mark this with a piece. So I'm going to put my center line here. So I want a 20 stitch opening. So I'm going to count 10 on this side and mark it. and 10 on this side and mark it. And then obviously the head is going to be here. Right there. So that's what I'm doing. You can figure out any way you want, but we don't close up this area. So it's completely up to you. So against your bottom Make sure your head, I'm going to zoom out a bit, make sure your head is where it's going to be to be able to line up your butt properly. This is the tricky part, trying to get this part right. Lining up my butt with my head. <laughs> That's the tricky part. So once you think you're set, we're going to slip stitch. I want you to just chain one here. But we're going to slip stitch these together. So we're just going to go stitch for stitch, but then you see you've got your legs. So just grab a piece of whatever you can grab. Actually, I shouldn't say we're going stitch for stitch. You can't really go stitch for stitch because 
One's got more stitches than the other one does. But that's not the tricky part. The tricky part <laughs> is trying to get them so that they're in a good spot. Now, some people would say, well, why didn't I sew the dots on after? It's very difficult to sew the dots on after because there's no stuffing that goes into this. So I'm at my marker here. I'm going to put a stitch in there. And now I'm just going to do the, in the red slip stitch, only in the red. So that's 19. This is my 20th stitch. So the next stitch, I'm going to start grabbing the black again. So because the black, like I said, is a lot smaller, we're just going to guess by puffing this up into the shell shape, putting it on here, and then just picking it up. So. You're just kind of guessing. You probably haven't skipped 20 stitches here. You've probably, well, let me see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So I've skipped 14 stitches in the black, 20 stitches in the red. And then you just continue. Because as long as the child can get their hand in there and the babies can get in there, that's what you're left with. That opening there. So as an adult, I can get my hand in there. The head area is tricky, but doable. So when you're getting neck up to the neck area, you can choose to slip stitch in the red only and then sew your part to your head or I got one more, one more fake stitch I can get into. I'm just sticking it wherever I can stick it. Or you can get in here into this head part and grab the posts. This is awkward. And it's hard to see because it's black. Just try to stay in the same line that you were in, like your first stitch. Just try to stay in the same spot. So again, I am just picking up the posts on the head. Can't get through this one for some reason. Getting stuck. What am I getting stuck on? I, like I said, it's very awkward. I 
here I'm getting stuck again. Oh, I'm getting stuck on the black. And of course the stuffing's going to come out a little bit, but you get to be able to pull it right up, which also will stop the head from flopping. Or you can choose to sew this, like I stated already. So it's completely up to you what you want to do. I appreciate the hold a lot better doing it this way. May not be the prettiest, prettiest ladybug on the block, but that's what you end up getting. So it's not excruciatingly horrible. So when everything's kind of in a normal position, that's what it'll look like. So. I just wanted to be able to not have the head to be so floppy. And now I'm back in my normal spot. So I'm on my last stitch and mine worked out fairly even so I can fasten off there I just kind of fluff it up a little bit so um, the next hard part is doing this black line it is awkward. It's very awkward. But I'm just going to sew mine on. So I want to try to keep it in the middle. I don't want to pull this all the way through. So I'm going to go down the same hole I just came up. I'm going to pull until I make a loop. Oh, you can't even see me. I'm going to go through that loop. I'm going to pull back and then forwards to make my little line. And then in front of, so this is my loop. right in front of that loop, go back down the same stitch and pop out into your next space and do the same thing. That's how I make lines. You can do it however you want. Go through the loop. Just gotta try to keep it straight. So if you did what I did, single uh, slip stitching this on, it's super important that you go all the way up because I think it would look stupid otherwise. So all the way to the top. And then I'm just going to go in here. It's so hard when you can't put stuffing in it. I 
it's going to be a button um, and a hasp up here. That's what I did. Put my button here and my hasp I just sewed on down here. So my button went up here. So we're going to do that next. I'm going to weave in my ends and sew my last dot on. And then I'll meet you back after you find your button. And we can just get that part done. Alrighty, so all my spots are on. My lines are done. I'm going to do the... I got my button to do the hasp part. And then we'll do what we did. What I did on his, on his head part. And then, oh, well, that's what I got from my dots on top. And then we can get to the BBs. So, so grab your black. We're going to make a um, slip knot with a long tail for sewing. This will be the part that we use for sewing. So just make a tail first and then make your slip knot. So it'll look something like this. You're going to chain five. And then you're going to do four single crochets back up to the beginning. You only have four working stitches because the fifth one is still on your hook. That's my fourth stitch the hard way. Thanks to that roll. <laughs> chain one. Turn your work. For the next three rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these four stitches. Chain one, turn your work. That's my three rows. So now we make the buttonhole. We're going to do one single crochet. Chain two. Skip two. One single crochet. Oops. Make sure I get under both pieces. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to go into the space. But we're going to SC2 tog two times. Our first stitch, go into that, pull up a loop, and then go into the space and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three. Now you're going to go into the space again, pull up a loop, and then into this last stitch. Oops, again, get under two pieces. Yarn over and pull through. So that's our SC2 tog two times. And you can fasten off. This end does not need a sewing tail. It just needs a weaving tail. We sew with the other end. This is the end. This is our buttonhole. So we just have to weave this in. So then we use this end, sew it on, that out of the way, so the button is going to sit on the line, so you just kind of make sure this is all matchy matchy.
There we go. So, grab some white yarn. Um, I'm just going to grab some of this. Got a really long sewing piece. Mine is really, really white. I did my eyes by just making a series of loops. Doesn't matter where you come in, just wherever you pop out. Don't pull that all the way through. And then I guess just determine how you want your eyes. How big. So his little antennas are super duper easy. You're going to grab some black. You're going to make a slip knot. You're going to get out of my own way. You're going to reattach below the eye. Now, mind you, there's not a whole lot of stuffing in here, so grab a post, just like this. Let me get all my yarn on the right side. You're going to attach, just do a single, or a slip stitch if you want. And you're going to chain four. And you're going to fasten off. That's it. That's all I did. That is it. That's all I did for the little feelers. I guess I could weave this part in. So I'll make another slip knot. Over here, try to keep it even and attach again. Do a slip stitch, and chain four. So I made sure not to cut too far. I got these little nubbies at the end, if you can see them, because I don't want my thing to come undone. Weave this in. There we go. That is all I did for the face. So all that's left to do are all these little tiny babies that go inside. So you're going to need colors because each one of them has, this is the bottom part, a color and then black and then we do the red shell. All the dots are going to just be sewn on so you need a bunch of colors. So you need two of each color. And we're making 12 of these tiny little babies. So I guess you can't really see my color when my <laughs> camera's turned up so high. 
So get all the little colors that you want to get for matching and then I'll meet you right back here and we can get these started. So I've got some green here I'm just gonna start with. Make sure these are all the same size and so they all have to be like a four weight yarn. So you're gonna start with whatever color that you're using. You're gonna do two of each color anyway so it doesn't really matter. You're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. You're going to slip stitch. Hehe. <laughs> maybe and chain one starting in the chain one space you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch for a total of 12 Slip stitch to that first chain, and chain one. You're going to do one single crochet and an increase. Your first stitch starts in that chain one space. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat this will bring it up to 18 stitches and then we change color on our last stitch so two stitches go into this last stitch the second stitch is where we're going to do our color change and we're going to go to black with the black we're going to slip stitch and chain one I'll just pull down on everything make sure it's tight so your next round with black is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So you're going into this chain one space to make your first stitch. That's number one. That's number two. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. This will bring it up to 24 stitches. So slip stitch to the top of that first chain, chain one. You can cut your green off. We're going to do a pop stitch now. A pop stitch is easy peasy, but it's going to be the head. That's what I chose to do for the head of the little baby. So first I want you to do four single crochets. So the first stitch goes in that chain one space. That's my four single crochets and then we do a pop stitch. So in this next stitch I want you to put six double crochets. Take your hook out of the loop you're going to count back two, four, six, go into the first stitch that you made, put the loop back on.
yarn over and pull through. So I just stick my finger in there to help. And then secure the stitch. So that's your little head. The only thing is you got to make sure you kind of push this back to get into this next stitch. And you're going to do 19 single crochets back around to the beginning. That's my 19th stitch. I'm going to slip stitch to the beginning and fasten off. So, we make 12 babies, two of the same color, so these are different colors obviously. Um, I've got a bunch of them. I'll show you. We're going to make 12. I just take them out of my other <laughs> my other prototype that I had to make for the video. So, there's my other green one that's going to be matching, but they don't always match. We don't really match the the numbers on them, but this is what we're doing. So, two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. You need twelve babies all together. So I want you to make twelve of the bottoms and then we're going to come back. So two colors each. So six different colors. Twelve babies. And then when we come back we'll do twelve tops. Sew them all together and then we'll do all the numbers. So that's what um, that's what we're going to be doing for the babies. So just to start, I'm going to put this pattern up on this screen and I want you to do 12 babies, 6 colors because you have to have 2 colors matching. And I'll meet you right back here. So now that all your babies, baby bottoms, <laughs> your baby bottoms are done, um, we're going to make the red tops and we're going to sew them all on. So yeah, this is a big project. I just got these two to do because I did all my other ones. So get your red. We're going to start with a magic ring of six half doubles. In a slip stitch to that first stitch, chain one. Everything starts in the chain one space, just like everything else we've been doing. You're going to do two half doubles in each stitch around. So in this chain one space, you're going to put two half doubles. Slip stitch to this first stitch that you did and chain one. 
Your next round is going to be one half doubles and an increase, bringing you up to 18 stitches. So your first stitch goes in that chain one space. And then your next stitch will get the increase of two half doubles in the same space. And repeat. slip stitch to that first stitch chain one your last round is going to be two half doubles and an increase your first stitch goes in that chain one space that's number one that's number two and then your next stitch will get the increase of so two half doubles in the same space so bring it up to 24 stitches So slip stitch to the top of that first chain and fasten off. You're going to need a sewing tail because you're going to sew it to the black. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried about this guy back here. So that gets sewn to that. So you need to make, <coughs> excuse me, you need to make 12 of these like you did 12 BBs and then get them all sewn on. So I will put the pattern up and I will meet you back here. When you sew, don't whip stitch because you're going to see it. So just so normally. Just like that so you don't see anything. I'm going to put the pattern up and then um, I will meet you right back here. To do the uh, baby spots for the counting part of the game. So I've got my two red ones that I had to do for the video. The other ones are already done. So I did not match the colors with the numbers. So these are my two blues for the matching game. But the one is a number one and one is a number five. So that's all I did. I just did X's to put my sewed X's on to make the numbers. This is a six and my other six, but they're two different colors. So, you, but you can do whatever you want. So all my colors, all my matching things. So these two guys are gonna be the number two. So I've got everything, two sixes, two threes, two ones, two everything. So all I did, let me get all these babies back in the little bum bum. 
you just take some black now I'm only doing the number two but um, if you wanted to um, make you can just do magic rings of six single crochets or five or four single crochets something small that because when you get to the number six there's gonna be a lot of them and that's why I chose to just do the sewing just because I could not even find buttons small enough and I think even if you made magic ring of four single crochets I still don't think it would be small enough it could be I don't know but you have to make 42 if you decide to make them you have to make 42 of them um, to get all your numbers so I just decided to do obviously the, the sewing part so um, I just found a spot to start leaving obviously a tail hanging out this is just for kids so maybe just here and here I just don't want to go too far apart trying to do it like a deck of cards you know I've got this deck of cards pictured in my head I don't know how the two set up on a deck of cards though I should probably have looked I mean not not the best job in the world But my little safety precaution here is to tie these just so the kids can't pull it off. <clears throat> now a button would be a little more dangerous because they could swallow that, but um, this I just want to tie so it's tied on the inside so they're not going to be pulling it off because a child could swallow this too, depending on the age of the child. A child could swallow one of these and... Uh, get you know or even the fibers down their throats so that's tied now on the inside anyway go ahead and make your numbers I just got to do my other number two and that'll be that'll be it so we'll finally be done this pretty long pretty long project but it's going to be pretty super cool. And they're quite popular, I must say. Well, there we have it. My number twos are done. So they can go into the bum. And that is our ladybug. This is my other one. This is the one I did with you on camera. I just put all the babies into this one. I still got to make all the babies to go into this one. <laughs> so I still got a lot of work ahead of me. Anyway, so thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you in the next video.